Thank you for caring and for always keeping us protected. We are not essential like oxygen is essential, but we, as the arts, see the world in a way that nobody else do. I think what arts do is it brings pleasure, it brings hope, and it also allows people in the moment to experience something together. Hi, I'm Emily. During the circuit breaker period, artists were actually one of the most affected group of people. So today, I'm going to find out how this theatre group was affected by COVID-19. Hi Tian Hong, nice to meet you. Nice to meet um, you too. First of all, how has COVID-19 affected your theatre troupe? Theatre is life and it's about human to human, in the moment, in the space, intimate exchange. So that went out the window in a hurry. Uh, we were doing a show, we just had two days run out of you know, 30 shows, and we had to shut it down. So we had to regroup and we asked ourselves, are we even useful or relevant anymore? Should we even be around anymore? We are not essential like oxygen is essential, but we are useful like we, as the arts, see the world in a way that nobody else do. So it offers a different perspective, especially during pandemic. I think what arts do is it brings pleasure, it brings hope, and it also allows people in the moment to experience something together that is a collective experience, uh, building a collective memory. So we give ourselves two parameters. Okay? One is we wanted to do it live, which is if you don't watch it now, it's gone. So it's about live streaming, it's about time limitation. Then the other thing is, we wanted the audience presence to change what we do. Because if you're in the theatre, you know, if you do a show badly, everybody goes, boo, you hear yeah. it, right? But at the end of the show, when they clap, or they give you a standing ovation, you also feel it. So how do we continue to keep on to those things in the work we make? We went into Overdrive to bring out our Nursery Rhyme, a series, and we made storytelling and singing and playing online, live. So we had to transform what we were doing, use what we knew, and then with very little resources and very little knowledge of what digital theatre meant, start exploring. We've been around for 55 years, and frankly, we have seen even harder times. In the past, when we had really, really tough moments in our history, it was more lonely because it was like us facing this problem. But now actually, it's a perspective that the world had together. You know, for arts, we tap into a collective awareness and a collective memory. This is an unprecedented time, right, for collective experiences. And I think that's very powerful for storytelling, you know. I think arts in general is often going against this, the, 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 the grain, yeah, the norm. A lot of times, arts organization have to accept that volatility. That is a muscle that many arts group and artists have developed. I'm also very lucky to be surrounded by fellow art makers who are as resilient. So the moral support for each other has been what you know, held together this whole journey for me that's still going on. But there were a lot of artists who actually had to go other places, like, like some went to get a full-time job, uh, some went to do with food delivery and try and make a living because you have to be productive. Overall, um, it is still quite difficult. There are a lot of people who gave up the arts altogether. There's no question that when this is all over and we go back to a more stable sort of operation, we would have lost some people, we would have lost some talent. Uh, and that is actually the biggest impact that we have not have to deal with yet. Meanwhile, I think the people who have chosen to hang on, the impact financially is real. The emotional impact, I think, is even larger. The trauma of that volatility in what we've chosen to do is something that a lot of people are still trying to come to terms with. In terms of live performances, I think it will transform. I think as human beings, we gain human-to-human -human interaction, right? It will never be replaced. But the experience of watching performances and storytelling will expand. 
right? In other words, for example, the digital format will expand the possibilities of our communication for our audiences. For about three months, we were streaming shows live and we knew our audiences were there because you can see on YouTube or Facebook, <laughs> jumping, view right? Count. Yeah, view count. But we were trying so hard that we wanted to see our audience. Right? For our actors also, performing to somebody that you know you're seeing. You know, and you can do this, you know, even if it's through the camera, we can do this exchange, it's very, very important. So in August, we did the first show where we saw the audience. It was a nursery rhyme storytelling. So when the window opened in Zoom and they popped on one by one, we were grinning year to year. We were so happy. And then when they turned on the mic and they sang and we could hear them sing, I think some of us had tears in our eyes. The satisfaction and the hard work all paid off. And more importantly, it was a confirmation that for some people, we are essential. <laughs> Wow, after talking to Jian Hong, I feel like I've learned more about the challenges and difficulties that artists face and how they were affected by these challenges and difficulties. Nonetheless, they stayed hopeful, resilient, adapted to change and were still able to make something that was magical, which still gave the feeling as if you were in the theatre. I feel that Jian Hong has inspired me in such a way that she has challenged my point of view about art and makes me question, what is art? and is art essential? If there are any key takeaways from the interview, I would say that change is constant and when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. If you want more of this content, join me in my next episode as I dive into what is considered the most essential job sector during this pandemic.